What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So yesterday, news broke that caused quite a bit of controversy when it came to Nintendo after a sizable investor came in and bought a large chunk of the company. Yes, the identity of the investor was a whole thing online, but also I saw the possibility of a hostile takeover being brought up online. We're gonna go over all of that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about another game that's been pushed into 2023 with last gen versions even being canceled. And we're also gonna be going over Sony and their big multi-platform pushed as they talked a bit more about it. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with Final Fantasy VII. As we're all kind of hanging out waiting for part two after getting done Final Fantasy VII Remake, we now know that things are a bit different and we're gonna have an entire new story in front of us. But let's take a look at this. This was posted up over on Push Square. Final Fantasy VII news planned for game's 25th anniversary next month. Of course, the game came out in 1997. So 20, it, it's so weird to think about that, by the way, that it's been 25 years since Final Fantasy VII came out. Anyway, this according to Push Square during the latest Square Enix Japan livestream for mobile title Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier, series veteran Tetsuya Nomura teased that news regarding Final Fantasy VII's 25th anniversary would be dropping next month. Obviously, this leads to the, the speculation of will we find out any more information around part two for the remake series now, whether it's a cutscene giving us an idea as to where they're taking this whole thing, or could it just be merchandise and them working to celebrate the 25th anniversary? That way, a lot of possibilities here, but certainly we wanna keep our eyes out next month. Also, while the new generation is now fully underway for Microsoft with the Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X, it looks like they are still indeed updating the Xbox 360. See this? Tweet posted up by Eden Marie saying, thanks to the two of you who reported that pins were no longer working on Xbox 360 consoles, a service fix is being deployed. If you still see problems after 24 hours, please let me know. I mean, it could have been joking about the two people, but I mean, I do wonder how many people are still using the Xbox 360 regularly online at this point. I feel like most have moved up to the Xbox One, but I wanted to also bring this up just to see if any of you are still using your Xbox 360 online, whether it's for, uh, I don't know, any of the different Halo games or Gears of War or Minecraft. I know there are still several good games on the 360 that maybe you wanna break that system out for, but still, I mean, the Xbox One, then the Xbox Series, I just don't see a lot of people talking about the Xbox 360 anymore, but at least there are two people out there to let them know there was an issue. Oh, and while we're now looking towards 2023 for Microsoft's big release with Starfield, there are still a few releases that are slated for the end of this year. Like for example, Scorn, at least, that's what people were hoping, and now that we're seeing these big delays happen pretty frequently, the question around different games and if they will still make their projected release year with 2022 is a cause for concern, but you can see this. This was over on Twitter from Robo saying, I hope Scorn game won't get delayed. Really looking forward to this game. And then Scorn came in a couple days later and said, we're still on track for launching this October. And you know, I, I did forget about Scorn there for a little while, and I think uh, most people did. I, I, I'm sure there's still people looking forward to it, but it's not really the big splashy game I think that Microsoft wanted to have for 2022 with Starfield. Scorn was kind of the complimentary game to come out alongside it. October makes a lot of sense though, because it's like the, the first person horror style game. Still looks kind of slow, and I'm sure for a lot of people seeing it, kind of gross, but uh, hey, it's a unique game. There's at least that, and it will be dropping into Game Pass later on this year, at least that's still the idea coming out in October. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo, but not necessarily for any of Nintendo's games. It's having to do with more of the business side of things and an investor that was reported yesterday that caused quite the stir online. We can see this over on Bloomberg. This is from Takashi Machizuki. It says, Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, that's the uh, PIF, took a 5.01% stake in Nintendo, its third investment in a Japanese games company as the industry consolidates. The PIF, as the $500 billion fund is known, said the Nintendo purchase was made for investment purposes, according to a filing to Japan's finance ministry. That is the same reason as given with previous investments, and the holding is set to make the Saudi fund Nintendo's fifth 
largest shareholder, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Bloomberg also notes the other two uh, Japanese companies, that being Nexon and Capcom. Actually, more than a 5% stake there for, for those companies. So yeah, they're pretty well invested in, in gaming. And then even outside of that, they are invested in Activision Blizzard, Take Two. And as soon as this news hit online, there was a lot of talk around why is this happening? Why did Nintendo sell 5% of the company to Saudi Arabia? Well, because Nintendo is a publicly traded company, they don't have any say in who's coming in and buying shares of that company. In fact, part of the story here from Bloomberg and others is Nintendo basically found out when it was reported on the news, which is a weird thing to consider, right? You're, you're Shintura Furukawa, you walk into the lunchroom, you look up at the TV and it's like, oh, the PIF has now invested billions of dollars to become one of the largest shareholders in Nintendo. Huh. Now, a lot of the controversy around the PIF investing in Nintendo and a lot of video game companies, obviously, are their policies and human rights issues within Saudi Arabia. I think it's also very important to note here that the governing body policies and, and rights, and all these things that go on there, isn't necessarily reflective of the people who live there, so keep that in mind. But I saw concerns from people that this may be a push for a takeover of Nintendo. And some of that has to do with what happened with SNK. I think some people are still unaware that SNK is like 96 or 97% owned by, by Saudi Arabia at this point. So naturally you see them come in with billions of dollars to own 5% of Nintendo. You're wondering, well, hold on, are, are they gonna keep going further with this? Be because with SNK, they came in initially with I think like 20 or 30% investment and then very rapidly just swallowed up SNK. I don't think that's the case here with Nintendo. I, I legitimately think they are saying this is for investment purposes because if you were trying to diversify hundreds of billions of dollars, as they're saying, you're probably looking at some of the more successful places to invest in. And I mean, gaming is massive right now. A lot of revenue coming in. We see Nintendo doing incredibly well. And there's a lot of anticipation for what's after the Switch. Can they continue this momentum? Not a bad place to invest, really. Also, this isn't gonna change the way Nintendo does anything. That was another concern that I saw online. Again, this is mostly just a business transaction where the PIF wanted to buy Billions of dollars worth of shares to own 5% of the company. At the, I guess the, the most Nintendo will have to do is if the PIF wants to send a representative to these investor briefings, they'll have to have a little place card for them there. Who knows, maybe they'll be the ones asking about the next gen Switch. I think just now at this point, people are becoming more and more aware of where the investments in these companies are coming from. Whether it's, uh, we, we see that with Tencent out of China, where they're investing in all kinds of different companies, or yes, even the PIF, out of Saudi Arabia, invest, uh, Arabia investing a ton of money all over the industry. And that's sort of where we are now. We're getting to the point where even if your morals don't align with all of the investors, you're basically gonna end up out of video games because these investments are starting to find their way into almost every company now. Next up, let's talk about a game that has not only been delayed into 2023, but also had the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions just Cancel. We can see this posted up over on Gamatsu. Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown delayed to 2023 with PS4 and Xbox One versions being canceled. Now it was originally gonna be coming out September 22nd and now we're just seeing a 2023 release year. We'll, I guess, find out more information as we get towards the end of this year. The thing that's very interesting about this, the current platforms that's still scheduled for would it be the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series, the Switch, and PC? That's right, the Switch is going to get a version here, but not the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4, which was kind of head scratching for a lot of people. However, it's also important to note that they may not necessarily even be developing the port for the Switch. I mean, we'll find out more information about that as we get closer to release but they may also be looking at it across the board and they're like, it's worth developing a version for the Switch One. Driving games are kind of few and far between when it comes to simulation racing games. We of course have like Mario Kart and that's incredibly popular, but having it here on the PS4 and the Xbox One, maybe the performance just wasn't where they wanted it to be. And they're just like, hey, you know what? Going forward, we're already in 2023. Those systems are pretty much being left behind, whereas the Switch is just completely flourishing. So it makes sense to port to the Switch, but not really the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4. And that is a trend 
We are seeing become more and more frequent with things like Gotham Knights losing its PlayStation 4 and Xbox One version. And I've been saying for a little while now that the 2023 is probably when this now current generation with the PS5 and the Xbox series was really gonna start moving along with Microsoft Studios getting spun up really in 2023 and Sony starting to move away from these cross-gen titles. Now we're just seeing third parties do it. So I'm thinking next year we're gonna see less and less of the PS4 and the Xbox One logo on some of these cards. What's starting to become a big multi-platform push for them as we are seeing many titles make their way to PC from PlayStation, and we're hearing more and more about how Bungie will be left as basically an independent developer to create games for other platforms and even have Destiny 2 continue to see support on the Xbox and, and so on there. But it looks like they have big plans for multi-platform, especially when it comes to some of their live service stuff. We can see this posted up over on Push Square saying Sony bigwig Kenichiro Yoshida has hinted that the company's acquisition of Bungie represents a major step forward in becoming more multi-platform. As previously announced, the Destiny developer will retain its independence adjacent to PlayStation Studios. Yoshida also touched briefly on PlayStation's emerging PC business, explaining that the company aims to provide access to our games to as many users as possible, and will be rolling out more PlayStation Studios titles on the storefronts like Steam and the Epic Game Store in the future. And I've been talking for a little while now about how I believe that Sony would eventually get to a point where they have a big budget release that's day one on PC and day one on a PlayStation. Like, I don't think they're all of a sudden gonna say, okay, yeah, you can have God of War or the next Horizon or Gran Turismo, any of these things on Xbox, but I think they're looking more and more at PC as just a viable platform to get more money from. I mean, really, I with PC in general, I, I've, I've noticed this a lot. It doesn't necessarily cut into the console business as much as I feel like people online believe that it does because working in games for as long as I did and being at the different stores, there are a lot of people who just don't wanna deal with PC, just outright. They don't wanna deal with the drivers, windows, whatever. They just wanna sit down on their couch and play a game. And so while right now anyway, Sony is doing these delayed releases where you may have God of War or Horizon show up years later after it's launched on the PlayStation, and I mean, got as much money as they could there, and it's all of a sudden $10 on PlayStation years later, they can charge full price on PC. I think these live service games will be a good way for Sony to test the waters and see how things go if they release on PlayStation and PC day one. And also if they incorporate things like crossplay, it would help with things like having a large player base on these different live service platforms. Oh yeah, and Yoshida also talked a bit about uh, the metaverse thing and went on about social experiences and how they wanted to work to leverage their intellectual properties to, I guess, participate in this big metaverse arms race thing. But they didn't really talk much more about that in detail. So I do wonder if they are creating their own VR chat or PlayStation Home 2, where they will have people essentially live in virtual reality with this PSVR 2, but I guess we'll have to wait a bit longer to find out. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Saints Row. It is coming out August 23rd, and the showing they had last year, I just I wasn't really feeling it from the characters they were showing and kind of the direction and you know, the art style, it just, it wasn't Saints Row, at least how I remembered it. Well, I think that was just a bad showing for them because some of the previews they've done recently, this past week, actually looks pretty fun. Like IGN had one, a Game Informer, I think Eurogamer, many of them had hands-off previews, which, I mean, I guess that's the best they could do at this time, where you basically sit there and you watch like 45 minutes of the game, but you are allowed to use that footage in your hands-off preview. Still think it's better to actually be able to play the game, but nonetheless, this is what we have. What they did show off though, were some pretty interesting aspects when it came to character creation, which is much more in depth than I was expecting. They also showed off a world that is pretty large. And the one question I have is, will it feel very empty? However, it looks like the chaos is all there when it comes to the old school Saints Row games. It was described as being closer to the more serious tone of two and not to the outlandish side of things that they got to later on in the series. But the weapons looked like they were pretty creative and a lot of fun to use. Things like the pineapple grenade and, and some stuff that was a bit silly while still trying to retain kind of the, the serious nature of it. It is certainly a game that's trying to call back to the old Saints Row series while 
trying to exist in current times, I guess. The characters just don't look that interesting to me. I know you're creating a lot of characters and stuff, but based on what they showed initially and what we're still seeing in these previews, it just they just don't look like they're really that compelling. So hopefully the world and the gameplay itself is interesting enough. And the fact that you will be building out an entire base and it looked like you were also flying all over the world in some pretty creative ways with even a hoverboard being shown. Seems like it'll be a, a fun arcade style game without the deep story or, or lore. But who knows, maybe they throw Johnny Gad in there at the end and do some crazy stuff. But uh, we're looking forward to Saints Row, August 23rd. This might be one where I kind of hang out and wait to see what reviews say, specifically about that open world if it's able to keep everyone's attention the entire way through. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, when do you think Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two will release? 41% said 2024. I like how the second most voted is 2026 with 29%. A lot of confidence there in Nomura getting this one out quickly. I think I'm gonna go with 2024. March or April. I, I think they have to get Final Fantasy 16 out there first, obviously. And I almost wonder if getting that released is the big priority even over just announcing or talking about part two. And I'm thinking 16 is gonna fall in the first half of 2023. So after that, we start talking about part two and then we work towards an early or first half 2024 release. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as we're seeing here. This is from Martin saying, Spawn, don't be messing with us. We need that Gears game. I was always more of a Gears person over a Halo one and that, that was a big thing back then. Sure, it was still on the Xbox platform, but it was always like Gears of War versus Halo, which one's better? I was a bigger Halo fan, so I felt on the side of Halo 3 is the game to play back then. But I, I gotta tell you, G the Gears of War series was a lot of fun and playing co-op all the way through it was great. I just never got into the multiplayer at all. So who knows, maybe they do this, this collection or this remaster collection, Master Chief style, and I go back and hopefully it has full multiplayer like the Master Chief collection does where it mixes them up and I'll try to get into it then. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today where Saudi Arabia's big time investment into Nintendo, 5% stake. How do you feel about that? And then also, what about Test Drive now getting pushed 2023, but the PS4 and the Xbox one version being canceled. You think that's gonna be more and more common going forward. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.